now we have installed and activated our software, we can start setting up our hardware. To do this, we have to open the scanner software. As you can see, we have two pieces of software, a builder and a scanner. We need a scanner in this particular case. Wait for the software to open. Again, like before, the green triangle indicates that the software has been activated. To set it up, the first thing we have to do is enable the camera, video capture, set device. This is done to choose the video camera that we are going to be using. In this case, we will be using the Microsoft DV camera and VCR. Make sure that you have a resolution which is approximately 640 by 480 or with a DV camera, full resolution. Don't go too high right now, it has no function, only slows down your system. Once we've selected the video device and the frame, we have to turn it on. We can see now how the video is streaming the data into the program. Here we can see the disk. And as you can see, the disk is at a slight angle towards the camera. One of the first things we want to do is we want to make sure that this is more or less correct. We do this by tilting the camera towards the correct angle. Do this as good as possible. Later on, we'll do a fine setup. You will save yourself a lot of trouble if you do this correct right now. The next thing we have to do is we have to make sure that the center of the camera is in the center of the turntable. To do this, we can use the white line that is on the screen, which is part of the compiler. And it's called the turntable center. We have to position this at the center of our frame. To do this, we have to first find out where the center of our frame is. If we move the slider all the way to the right, we can find the frame size in X or at the bottom of the screen, you will also find your frame size in X. Divide this by two and you'll have the position where you should put your turntable center. 720 divided by two is six, sorry, 360. If you're having trouble getting the right value in by sliding it with the mouse, use the arrow keys on your keyboard to make smaller steps. The white line is now exactly in the center of our frame. So we can click OK to remove the window. At the same time, we can see that there is a slight offset between the camera and the table. We're going to correct that first. Again, later we're going to do a fine setup, but it will save you a lot of trouble if you do this as good as possible already. OK to close the window. Now we have set up our basic camera position. The next thing we have to do is the laser. First, we turn it on. This is, of course, done on the battery pack itself, not in the software. You can see in the background the red laser line. First thing to do is to focus it. The easiest way to do this is to put a white, to focus the laser, we first place a white piece of paper in the center of a turntable as a screen. Now we rotate the laser head. Don't worry about the angle until the line is as narrow as possible. That's about it. As you can see right now, we have a very nice fine line. Again, don't worry about the angle of the laser. Next thing we have to do is we have to make sure that the laser line is perpendicular to the disk. To do this, we use the calibrator that you have in your kit. These can come in various shapes and sizes. They all have the same function, they all work the same. In this particular case, I'm using a smaller version. Place the calibrator on the turntable in the laser line. And you will see a reflection shaped like a V. There, you can see it. We now have to rotate the complete laser assembly without changing the focus, such a way that the V is completely overlapping itself and becomes a straight line. This is a bit tricky in the beginning. It might take a little while before you get this done correctly. 
it's important that you do this as accurate as possible since the scan accuracy depends on this. This is about correct. You can see right now that the V is completely disappeared and moved into a straight line. Next thing I'm doing is I'm placing the calibrator in the center of the turntable. And to be used as a target for aiming my laser towards the center. What I'm doing now is I rotate the laser in such a way that the laser line on my calibrator exactly overlaps the white center line on my screen. This is also the moment when we can make small adjustments in the angle of our camera or the angle of our turntable to correct for those. When you do that, make sure that the laser line, the center, turntable center and the center line on your screen stay overlapped. Also here, the more accurate you do this, the more accurate your scan result will be. I've now set up my laser to the cent turntable center. My camera is perfectly straight and everything is nicely perpendicular. The next thing that we have to do is we have to make sure that the turntable center is exactly in the center of the camera. Just before we did a coarse setup, now we're going to do a fine setup. To do this, you rotate the center line on the table facing the camera. Now I'm placing the calibrator back on the table in the center. As you can see that the center of the calibrator is perfectly in line with my center line of my, of my screen. Now I'm moving my calibrator to the edge of the table without rotating the, ta the table while making sure that the center of my calibrator is in the center of the line. And as you can see right now, it's that the turntable center line is facing exactly towards the camera. This is important for determining the angle between the camera and the laser later. Don't worry if you have rotated your turntable a bit. At this phase, you can rotate the turntable easily by hand. Placing the calibrator back on the center of the turntable right now with the goal to set up the laser. There we go. Like before, we can still see that everything is nicely aligned. Now I'm moving the calibrator over the line to the edge of the table. And now I can see with the position where the laser line hits the calibrator, if it's overlapping with one of the engraved lines. These lines on the table are 30, 45 and 60 degrees, giving you an aid of setting your angles. If you use these lines, you're absolutely sure that you have a known angle. Arbitrary angles are of course possible, but far more complicated and outside the scope of this tutorial. Verifying if everything is still okay. Next thing we have to do is make sure that the turntable is actually functional. To do this, we have to go to the device interface, which you will find in scan settings and device interface. A window will pop up. If you now press the detect device button, you can get either one of two messages. In this case, we get the USB device not found, indicating that the USB cable has not been connected. Connect, connect the USB cable, make sure that the USB device has been detected and installed, as you can see here in the bottom corner. If you now press the detect button, you see it's changed to USB device found, indicating that the USB device is active. Now we can make the turntable turn. For this, we have a run button. 
if you press run, the turntable should spin at a slow speed because the step rate is quite slow. By increasing the step rate, you can speed up the turntable. Typically, we would want to use a value of somewhere between 250 and 240. 250 for lightweight objects, 240 for heavier objects. The higher the number, the higher the speed of your turntable will be. You of course also have the possibility to change the direction. In this case, this is not important. Turntable is spinning, USB device has been detected, everything is fine. We are ready to make a scan now.